Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live on our grief page. And um, we missed last week, I apologize. But two weeks ago, we had our social worker, Monica Short, come and speak to us about mindfulness. And today we have another guest speaker, a special guest speaker, uh, Brianna, and she is also one of our licensed medical social workers. And she works primarily with patients and families out in the community, but she also does help within the home as well. Um, Brianna came with a subject today that I think you'll find helpful and beneficial. It's realistic expectations of grief. So Brianna, if you would like to share with us, maybe share a little bit about yourself oh. first and what you do here. Sure, so um, I'm one of the social workers here um, and I work with our community members while they're on hospice care. Um, but I also do bereavement support and I have for quite some time. So this year I'll be celebrating my 10th year in hospice care. Wow. Um, so it's my 10th year um, doing hospice and end of life and bereavement support. So over those 10 years, I've met with quite a few people um, that are anticipating a loss and then certainly have a loss. Um, and everybody's different, but I've learned a lot, and I hope that my visits with them and our visits with them um, have been really uh, effective and helpful. Mm -hmm. And so when I talked with you about um, coming today and about a topic that might be helpful, I thought of something that comes up a lot in uh, the one-on-one -on -one visits that I have with mm -hmm. people after they have the death of a, lo a loved one. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like a realistic expectations and specifically like self-expectations. Um, many of the people that I meet with um, set expectations that are far too high for themselves, mm -hmm. um, coping with the grief and loss that they have. Um, and so um, today we're just going to talk about a few things that might be helpful to hear um, and helpful to know so that when um, you're thinking about, you know, um, healing with grief, um, they, you know what is an appropriate expectation to have of yourself. Um, uh, one of the things I think that I hear from a lot of people is they don't really have, they, they, when they expect, they expect too much too soon. Mm -hmm. Grief takes a lot longer to heal from um, and to, to go through than you would anticipate. So a lot of people don't give themselves enough time to really absorb things and cope with that grief. The comment that I most commonly hear are, I thought I'd be further along. Mm -hmm. I thought that I'd be tearful less. Mm -hmm. um, shouldn't I be here by now? Mm -hmm. And my answer is usually no. Mm -hmm. No, that's too high of an expectation. Even yeah. a couple years down the road, sometimes yes. that reoccurring grief comes back and yeah. hits you, and mm -hmm. it's like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Even grief that you found, you know, you, that you've kind of gone through the bulk of processing mm -hmm. and you have really done a good job of working on it, can hit you all of a sudden again mm -hmm. and you can feel like you've rewind, rewound mm -hmm. a little bit. And that's normal. Mm -hmm. That's um, And it's appropriate for that to happen. So, you know, you're right, two mm -hmm. years, three years, you know, mm -hmm. 10 years. Sometimes we think, you know, we had this person pass in our life 15 years ago um, and we're fine, but then maybe a new loss Triggers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. triggers things with that one yeah so it's um, that's not uncommon to happen and it's okay to let that happen um, one of the other things that people don't consider is that grief takes a lot of energy you know grieving and working through loss takes a lot of energy so you know it's not it's not easy mm -hmm. and you're gonna put forth quite a bit and working through that grief feeling. And you don't necessarily feel like doing the things that you would normally do. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to just get up and uh, take care of the, the normal everyday things that need to be taken care of mm -hmm. because you're, you're kind of just, you, you're kind of entrenched in this sorrowful feeling that mm -hmm. consumes you at times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe you anticipated something that was a joy for you before, mm -hmm. you look forward to, you really loved and, and wanted to do, and then you, it comes down to doing it and you're just exhausted. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the energy to do it or the passion to do it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that that passion's gone for forever. Mm -hmm. Maybe just today, maybe just mm -hmm. for the month, 
you know, maybe a year. We don't know, but it can still come back. I like that though about the passion because I think that that is very true when you're going through grief that the things that normally brought you uh, fulfillment or pleasure or whatever all of a sudden mm -hmm. don't they just you know you just feel kind of dull and mm -hmm. yeah they don't have the same so, taste right, as they right, did before yeah right. yeah especially mm -hmm. if you participated in that passion with the person mm -hmm. that has passed yeah so if going to a gardening convention with your sister every year was um, something that you planned for for months and you prepped for mm -hmm. and then your sister passed but you were still kind of hoping to go and maybe you had other gardening friends that were going to go of course i chose gardening because <laughs> I have to do it well done. gardening but, convention <laughs> but maybe it comes down to two days before mm -hmm. and you just don't feel like it you're just tired and exhausted. That doesn't mean you'll never not want to go to that convention again or not be with those friends again. Um, it just means that, you know, it took a lot of, it's taken, your grief has taken a lot of energy. You're doing a lot of hard work and, you know, you can come back to it. Mm -hmm. It'll, it can resurface again, especially when you work through those grief feelings and you don't just suppress them and ignore them. Right. And that's a big one is because sometimes we think, Oh, I should be here. I should be moved along this far in my grief recovery, or you know, I should be at this point, and I'm not. And then so we kind of just give up, and then we avoid our grief feelings altogether, mm -hmm. and hope to just push them away, and that they'll disappear, and that suddenly an epiphany is going to happen, and we're going to move on, and we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. That's not. That's also not a realistic mm -hmm. expectation. That grief will sit with you. You have to work through it. You have to address it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's not something that's just going to go away. Right. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, grief really changes a lot over time. It um, kind of unfolds and evolves, whether it's through a day or through a week or through a visit with a friend or someone who does grief support. Um, Grief is not going to be a regimented process, um, and you're not going to necessarily work through your grief like your neighbor did. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is what worked for me. It's great to hear those ideas. Mm -hmm. Maybe that will work for you, and that will help you. Maybe it won't, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so that grief really like evolves over time, um, and that evolves from, like I said, you know, days, weeks, months, mm -hmm. years, um, and it changes. You um, kind of have to find how it customizes to you. Yes. What, you, what yeah. brings you comfort. And right. I think that the expectation is, is I'm going to grieve in my way, and my way is unique to me. Mm -hmm. And I have to accept that and know that um, if I'm not grieving the way that my sister is, that my aunt is, that you know my father or brother, even if we've all lost mm -hmm. the same person, mm -hmm. let's say we all... We're a large sibling group and we all lost a sibling. You know, there's gonna be one sibling that goes about their life and maybe it's fine. There's gonna be one that really needs a lot of support. And there's gonna be one that just has tough days. That's okay, everybody grieves differently. And I think we compare ourselves too much to other people who have had that loss. Mm -hmm. You know, especially within a family unit or a friend circle. You've been friends for a long time, and you go out to lunch together, mm -hmm. you get together every year or month or week, and one of those friends passes away. It's okay for one person to be grieving differently and working through it differently than it is for another. You can't compare our grief to other people, so we expect, oh, I should be grieving like Sally, mm -hmm. because she seems to be doing better. Mm -hmm. But you also don't know what Sally's right. going through, right. and Sally may just not be talking right. about it. Maybe she really is doing okay. Mm -hmm. She's working through it appropriately. Maybe she's not, mm -hmm. you know? So observing other people is not always <laughs> right. a good practice. Yeah. It's not realistic. When you go to the grocery store, I mean, before the masks, you know, you see people and they smile at you. Okay, they look happy. Are they happy? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe they lost a brother yesterday. Mm -hmm. We don't know. So, you know, we can't 
judge and expect that our friends are also doing okay and we should be doing okay too. Um, let's see, are, you know, the grief process is really like, an, uh, like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So most people expect it to be like this, right? We're gonna take these steps mm -hmm. and then slowly get, be get better and better and we're gonna be okay. You are gonna get better and better. You are gonna be okay, but you are gonna have major waves of ups and downs and that's just to be anticipated. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's not always hills and valleys. Right. <laughs> You know, um, or you can't always expect that you're just going to move forward and never have a step back. Right. You know, when you expect that of yourself and then that expectation fails, then we have mm -hmm. even more issues. Right. So if you just accept that I'm going to have really great days and I'm going to have really rough days, mm -hmm. you can work through those things. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's helpful, I think, for people to know that. Um, many of these things that I'm talking about happen to most people when they mm -hmm. have a significant loss. Mm -hmm. You know, we just don't always talk about it. It's not right. societally acceptable right. always unless you have a unique group of friends mm -hmm. or a community of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that um, when we're meeting with people, it's important to recognize what you are going through. Um, your feelings and thoughts are important. Um, but sometimes it's nice to know that you're not alone and that there's other people experiencing it too, which they're just not necessarily going to approach you and say, you look like you've had a loss recently, so have I. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not really something that happens these days. I can see that in our, uh, right now we're not doing them because of the COVID, but mm -hmm. our group meetings, um, people come, some are, they're all at different stages. Some people have just recently lost a, a loved one, some have you know, been going through this for quite some time. And some people are free to share their story and other people are just not comfortable talking, but yet they are getting something out of just hearing everybody else and saying, okay, I'm not that <laughs> different. You know, I, this, is, this is normal to feel this way, so. Yeah, I think that's, There's a, a lot of validation. that's a really great point, is not everybody talks as much as I do. <laughs> you know, so I might put all of that out there, mm -hmm. first group, right. just unleash unleash everything, right. and cry those tears, and let those people support me, And um, but there may be somebody else that's grieving that maybe just internalizes it a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know, but they might have benefited from seeing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, something else in grief and self expectations is oftentimes we expect ourselves not to react in public places. Um, or I'm going to be okay at this event because there's nothing related to that person we lost or significance. You know, it's a work event and I'll be just fine. I'm not going to break down in tears. Mm -hmm. And then we expect that I'm going to be okay. And then somebody says something mm -hmm. and we're holding yes. back tears <laughs> and you know and we're having a hard time getting through a conversation and um, and so you expected that you were going to be okay mm -hmm. and that you weren't going to have tearful moments it, it's better just to accept that if I have a tearful moment I'm going to be okay with that or these are the steps that I can take to kind of like regroup mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. a lot of times we um just um, aren't okay grieving publicly and we feel you know from a lot of people I hear that that, that makes them feel weak mm -hmm. or it makes them feel or the, they feel um, almost guilty for putting that on that other person they're talking to right. you know realistically that person may be going through something you don't know or in the future go through something and that moment in time may really impact them. So if you are talking to someone at a work event and you become really tearful because you lost your dad three months ago, it happened. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, have a plan for yourself and move on. And um, just know that maybe it was not what you planned or it was embarrassing for you, but maybe it could help that person. Mm -hmm. 
maybe they're going to see their dad next week and they were really frustrated because they have to drive three hours and guess what now they're going to feel different about driving that three hours to see their dad because mm -hmm. now they have you know known that you lost yours so um, sometimes our grief experiences even though they're not what we expect out of ourselves can be helpful to other people mm -hmm. Um, you know, when you grieve, you don't always just, just grieve the individual. Mm -hmm. You grieve sometimes for the things that you planned with them, mm -hmm. um, for the future, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when we have young loss, mm -hmm. um, uh, when people are, you know, um, not at that age where we think it's, mm -hmm. it's okay. Um, you know, you grieve the person, but you also grieve the life that you planned with them, right. or the trips that you liked to do with them. You grieved your future. You're grieving. Mm -hmm. You know, you grieve that future with them. So it's not just about this little piece of grief that's the individual. There are so many more things that go into grieving. Mm -hmm. You know, um, dreams you had for them. Oh, you know, especially with a child, even if that child's an adult mm -hmm. when they pass away. You know, I don't think you ever stop having dreams for your children, mm -hmm. you know, um, or dreams for what your loved ones, mm -hmm. you know, right. yeah. Um, let's see some other realistic self expectations. Again, you know, we want to just really not expect too much out of ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and it doesn't have to be a regimented grief recovery process. Right. Right. And I think that that's probably like the biggest thing that I'm trying to get across is, is that please don't try to measure it on a scale right. and keep it consistently going in the right direction, you know, because when you do that, then you can feel like you're not doing it right. Right. You're setting unrealistic expectations of yourself yeah. that you will not necessarily be able to fulfill. It's probably a topic in almost every single visit that I have with people that have had loss is is that a realistic expectation mm -hmm. um, there are occasions where we feel like others are putting expectations on us mm -hmm. sometimes that's true and they are uh -huh. <laughs> and sometimes it's just us thinking our self-talk what we yes have. yes well they expect me you know I'm thinking to myself I'm like well I'm going to this family event and it's been six months since my you know, person has died, you know, I'm sure that my family or friends are expecting me to be through this. And so I need to present like I'm okay. And so something I might ask is, okay, who, who shared that with you? Or how did they communicate that expectation to you? Mm -hmm. And then you hear a pause where people think mm -hmm. they don't, people don't generally have an expectation of you. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't have an expectation of you to help them. Mm -hmm. They don't have an expectation. It's, it's that self-talk, mm -hmm. you know. I've talked myself into mm -hmm. the, this is what people expect right. of me. Then again, there is the rare occasion where... Family members or whoever. <laughs> yeah. Somebody mm -hmm. is going to say something to you yeah. that's going to be out there. Yeah. <laughs> And that might be them putting an expectation, you shouldn't be crying anymore. Yeah. <laughs> or um, you should do this, you know. Yeah. So there is going to be some instance where you're going to interact with a person and they're going to share with you what you should be doing or what you should have already done. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. Try to move past it. And oftentimes people really have the best of intentions. Right, they do. Yeah, you know, and you, you know, sometimes you can kind of see it coming. You know that um, Uncle Joe speaks his mind and he's a firm guy, so he's probably gonna say something to you. You know, it's, yeah. it's okay, you know, yeah. just know that it's gonna happen at some point, somebody's gonna say something mm -hmm. to you. But um, a lot of times it's us perceiving mm -hmm. what we think people expect from us, mm -hmm. not necessarily what they do. Right. So that's something to think through is, 
is this something that they actually expect from me or is this something I kind of developed myself? You know? Um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about like old losses and new losses. Mm -hmm. So sometimes a new loss might be, you know, um, not somebody who is particularly close to us. Um, you know, sometimes it's, you know, our friend from work, they had a loss. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, that loss um, really triggered an old loss we had. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we're we're thinking about losses. I know most of the people that may watch um, may be more fresh in their in, in their grief journey, and that's probably why they're kind of um, coming in and um, taking a look at what we're talking about. But um, sometimes old loss or other people's losses can trigger, you know, old grief. Grief that we so, may have worked through. Grief we may have not have worked through and did, weren't aware of it, mm -hmm. or we didn't work through and we avoided it and we. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And now it's catching up. And now it's catching up. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, there's there's that expectation of, um, you know, it's okay if many years down the line you're still, you know, mm -hmm. still grieving that loss. I don't think that it ever really goes away. We just learn to cope with it. Right. We learn tools and, mm -hmm. and then we become more accustomed to that feeling. And um, we learn how to get through our day, mm -hmm. our month, our week, our year. And continue living our lives and moving forward. Right. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes grief can really involve like an identity crisis for people. I think I find this more so with people that are really doing a lot of care or are responsible for that individual's mm -hmm. care. So it happens a lot with um, children and their parents. Mm -hmm. um, we expect for our parents to pass away f before us. It doesn't always happen, right? Mm -hmm. Things don't always follow that normal death progression that we expect. Um, we expect to, you know, pass after our families but before our children. It's not the way that it always it goes. Um, but I find that when you are a direct caregiver, whether you're caring for someone in your home or you're visiting them or you're just overseeing, excuse me, all of the things that need to be done when somebody's getting care is a lot of times we have like an identity crisis. Who am I without this person here? Mm -hmm. um, or if we have um, a partnership with someone and that partner passes away, who am I without them? Mm -hmm. You know, where in our friend circles do I fit now that, you know, my wife is gone? My, you know, we went out as a couple group, the six of us, every Thursday night, you know, um, you know, uh, once a month, for the last six years, where do I fit in that group? Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of learn to adapt. So it's realistic to learn what your new identity might be mm -hmm. um, without their presence. And I think sometimes we might put more pressure on ourselves than what the, the group, you know, like mm -hmm. going out with that group, they might still say, oh, you're still a part of us, yes. but suddenly you feel like, how do I fit in now? Because mm -hmm. I don't have my partner anymore. Right. And you guys all have your partners, so. Mm -hmm. But they experienced a loss too. Mm -hmm. That your wife exactly. was part of that group. Right. And they're going through a loss as well. Certainly the loss is different for them. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, learning who you are as part of that grief process right. is developing and learning who like, okay, you know, maybe I'm gonna go to breakfast every Saturday morning on my own now. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm coming up with a different plan. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do waffles and eggs. That's gonna be my new thing, right. you know? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes we stick with those traditions and sometimes we go away from them. That's right. really okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of like finding that new identity. Um, so I know I, I just had a, a list of some things that we commonly see and talk mm -hmm. about and um, things that I wanted to, you know, like validate to people are normal, mm -hmm. um, things that they should expect and um, really just um, we, we can move forward <laughs> and we don't have to move forward the way you think you're going to right. um, and self-reflection is really hard. Mm -hmm. This is really, I mean, this is hard work. 
It is. Again, it goes it into is. energy, right? It is. <laughs> you know, it, reflecting on where we've been, where we're going, where we are right now, that's that's really difficult to do. And sometimes it takes the aid of a secondary person to sit down and talk to. And that's part of the reason why we offer grief support. Mm -hmm. You know, that's part of the reason why it's an agency that services available or things like this is that are available because maybe you don't need to sit down with someone mm -hmm. maybe just hearing it mm -hmm. you know through a Facebook live video mm -hmm. is gonna be really helpful but we do offer like you go out to homes mm -hmm. and talk with family members after they've lost a loved one mm -hmm. um, you know if they need a little uh, extra help a little you know one-on-one -on -one time with somebody that can be objective Sometimes it's hard to talk to your family or your loved ones about what you're going through. So we do offer that service. Yes, yeah. Um, and, and many times um, it's a few visits. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just one or two. Mm -hmm. That's all you really need. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes for people, um, someone might, you know, be the next week, mm -hmm. you know, three days later, five days later, I'm ready. Can, I, can we please talk? Um, one on one. Sometimes it's even after a year we get you'll get a phone call. Mm -hmm. You know, we were getting these letters or we were talking with this individual, and I kind of like to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. it, it, and and it's it's different for everybody. Right. Some people need to wait that right. length of time, and some people are ready right away. Right. Some people don't ever need it, and that's all right. You know, so that's why it's unique to you accept that it's unique to you. You are not gonna cope with it. You're not gonna need the same supports as everyone else does. You might hear of something that somebody else has done or said that mm -hmm. appeal to you that they fit for you. Um, but they might also say, oh, I saw the, the hospice grief lady or gentleman and it was wonderful, you need to do that. You may not need to do that, mm -hmm. you know. It was helpful for them. Mm -hmm. but find what fits for you. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the most important thing that we could probably end with, really, is that um, when you lose someone that you care about, whether it's a friend or a family member, um, whether it's an acquaintance or a coworker, whatever that loss was, you don't stop missing them. Mm -hmm. um, certainly it's more so effective or like, you know, when I say that, it's going to be more impactful for the people that were part of our daily lives and build significant relationships with, but you're always going to miss that person that passed away. Absolutely. Always. Mm -hmm. um, and so that doesn't need to be the reason, or that doesn't need to be something that's wrong. You know, mm -hmm. you can still move forward, you can still accept that you miss them and um, cope with that. Mm -hmm. But it's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. So it, really, the goal is finding like peace and contentment, and not necessarily not missing them anymore. So, I don't know. Anything else to add, or? I think we've pretty much hit. That <laughs> I, you did a very good job of uh, talking about the expectations of you know what some of us think um, you know when we're going through the grief mm -hmm. process and. So hopefully that will help with uh, those of you that are having, you know, going through this. Um, you know, don't set expectations on yourself. Just roll with it. And if you need help, we're here. We would love to be able to offer some support. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.